Get ready for the new internet, web 1, web 2, and now we're coming up on web 3. Kind of like Spider-Man, where it's different every 10 years, where it's a uh, different technology, different audiences, and a different Spider-Man. So think of it that way. Think of web 1 as America Online, which is just this internet magazine that you can't really interact with. Think of web 2 as what we have right now, with social media and YouTube, where people can create content, but the big corporations are making money off the users who are using the platform and generating that content. And Web3 is where you have ownership over your content, over the ads that get served to you, and there might be more of a revenue share program. So the internet is changing with Web3, and that pretty much explains what is Web3. And we're going to just jump right into seven different sectors or seven different things you could do with Web3 right now. But before we do, if you can help me out by hitting the like button, I would appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Before we get started, I am not a financial advisor. Do not take any of this as financial advice. And we're just going to be looking at several projects and what they're doing in the Web3 space. If you choose to invest in that project, that's up to you. I am not recommending any of these. But if you would like a deep dive on any of them that I haven't done already, let me know in the comments. And having that engagement does help, even if it's like, hey, Dan, great video. Now I know what Web3 is. So getting started, we can just jump right into coin market cap and it will tell us which coins are currently classified in Web3. Now, this list is not accurate because there are a lot of projects where there might still be starting off and they just haven't been properly tagged. But the bigger projects will be tagged on coin market cap. So there's that. And uh, starting off, let's take a look at Filecoin. Filecoin with a market cap of $5 billion. Now, Filecoin specializes in decentralized storage. So Filecoin, files are on the blockchain. You can actually make cryptocurrency by providing storage space to the network. Now, $5 billion is a very big market cap for it at the moment, and there are a lot of competitors. So honestly, I probably wouldn't invest in this one, but you should know there are a lot of projects in the decentralized storage space. And at the moment, I don't know who's actually using it and the demand for it. I know people are using some of the uh, tokens on Arweave for that permanent online storage for NFTs. And if you compare it to Google Drive, which has a much better user experience, it's going to be very challenging to bring users away from like the Google ecosystem and into the Web3 environment. So the decentralized storage space could still be several years away. At the moment, it will be a struggle for people to adopt the technology. And that kind of goes for everything when it comes to Web3. And then we have the decentralized internet and the coins that fall into that category. There's, there's a few of them, but the most prominent one at the moment right now is Helium Network. If you want to get a Helium miner, it's very difficult and there are a lot of scams out there. So be careful. Now, as for the people using the Helium Network, I don't actually have any data on that and how much demand there is at the moment. But as the network begins to grow and censorship continues, Web3 and the decentralized internet is going to thrive. Now, another project in the space would be Deeper Network. Full disclosure, I am invested in a couple of these projects. Deeper Network is one of them, and that's because they are also building the decentralized internet and building a whole platform around that. It started off with their Deeper Network VPN, DPN, and that is turning out into a lot of other things, but I'm gonna keep this section short and we'll do a deep dive very soon. And that's because I was lucky enough to meet this CMO out here in Taiwan, very random. And he was able to tell me about the project, looked into it, very exciting stuff. And there will be a deep dive on that very soon. Now, when it comes to Web3 and decentralized social media, I actually really like Den.Social. This is the platform. I did a video on them very recently. You can check that out in my past videos. And they are making social media decentralized. Well, in the sense where you create content, you engage with other people. If people find that it's good content, 
you get upvoted, that turns into rewards that can turn into actual cash. Additionally, you can have ownership in some groups. So let's say there's a lot of activity in the cryptocurrency group and you have ownership over it, you do get passive income rewards for being a partial owner within that group. Now this could potentially be the business model for Web3, but at the same time, they do face challenges with not tracking your data. And if they don't track your data, it's really hard to get a customized feed of your interest. Whereas I actually want YouTube to track what I'm watching so they know what to recommend to me next. Which is why there is another Web3 project out there that focuses on monetizing your data so you can get rewards for seeing those ads because advertisers don't want to waste money advertising to everybody. They want to advertise to their target audience. You want to provide your data so you get that customized feed, but you also want to get rewarded if you are inconvenienced by seeing an ad. And while we're talking about ads, this video was sponsored by Unstoppable Domains. Unstoppable Domains allows you to own an NFT domain. And this is one time, you pay for it once, and then you have it forever. Now, this also falls into the Web3 space because if you have a domain, you have a website, you have to pay rent on it every year. You have to maintain that. With Unstoppable Domains, these are NFTs. You own that domain for life. So these domains can be used in two different ways. Number one, the most common way, you can use it as your wallet address. So I have fullvalue.crypto. For the cryptocurrencies and wallets that are supported, I can just type fullvalue.crypto and send my funds to that address. And number two, it's an actual website. So if you're on a Web3 compatible browser, you can go to that website. Now I actually don't have a website made currently for fullvalue.crypto, but if you want to learn more and get that NFT domain, there will be a link in the description. Mask Network. Mask Network is the bridge between Web2 and Web3. I actually did a deep dive video on them. If you want to check that out as well, it's on that channel. And it is a Chrome extension that you can use for Twitter and Facebook. It gives you the access of all of crypto within that specific platform, as well as masking your tweets. So let's take a quick look at the uh, Chrome extension. You can see here, I am logged in with my wallet. I can connect to Facebook and Twitter. I already have my Twitter accounts connected. There are a lot of features on that. We aren't gonna jump into everything. But my favorite thing about the Chrome extension is if I hover over any cash tag, I can see all the different pricing information that I want to see. So I can see that this is Mask Network, all the general information like their website, the explorers, the price. This price feed is provided by CoinMarketCap, so I can see how it's been trending, how it's been doing. I can look at the exchanges it's trading, if there is a big price difference. That makes it easy for me to try a little bit of arbitrage. And if I wanted to, I can also swap all within Twitter. Now this is possible because of the Chrome extension and Mask is the Web2 and Web3 bridge. So it makes it easier for people to stay on the platforms that they're comfortable with while still having that additional crypto power. And uh, with Mask Network too, you can also create a tweet. I can mask a tweet, which encrypts it, and it will go out to anybody who already has the Mask Network extension, or it can go to whitelisted users, like my friend specifically, I wanna tweet something, I want them to know something immediately, but I don't want everyone to know. So you can do that with Mask, and let's move on to the next one. Gaming and the metaverse. So Web3 has changed everything where games can be owned by the players. The ecosystem, the economy can all be player motivated and based. And it's not just a centralized source of a company selling a product. So you can actually make money from playing these cryptocurrency play to earn games. And this is all thanks to Web3. There are a lot of people playing these play to earn games, but maybe they don't know that, hey, this is actually a part of Web3 where the economy is more focused on the people using that service. And number seven, NFTs. Now there are a lot of junk NFTs that won't make you money, but the goal of NFTs right now is to support the artist. You don't have to go through a record label. You don't have to go through some art dealer. You can just put your content that your audience already loves or could potentially find out about and create an NFT and monetize it. Now there are a lot of junk NFTs out there that are just cash grabs 
and that's true, but for a regular person, an artist that is struggling and that has great work, NFTs are the best way to support that artist immediately. Now, right now, I think NFTs are at a very early stage. Um, you know, there are a lot of popular ones, there are a lot of cash grabs, but the utility is there and it is being developed. For example, with crypto gaming, you can have an NFT that links to a direct game item. You can't right click and save that exact same NFT and still have that item in the game. You actually need that NFT to participate in the game. The same thing goes for the higher level NFTs like Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks. These give you access to those specific communities and that access is very valuable because you can find out what's next. Now, I am not in that community because I am not rich, but I could be rich with likes. So if you want to hit that like button, that helps me out. Decentralized identity. Bonus number eight, because uh, I forgot to add it to uh, what I recorded earlier. So different shirt on, different day. All right, decentralized identity could be the future of Web3 and just how we interact in general, because you don't need to give out all your information repeatedly. It is a hassle. Like imagine if you had your medical records attached to your decentralized ID, you don't have to fill out that form every time. You would be able to authorize a transaction to release your secure data to your health provider. So they could see your entire medical history and that would be attached to your decentralized identity. On a more practical level, if you are a young looking person and you go into a bar, they have to check your ID. They need to know that one, you're over the age of 21, at least within the US, and number two, that you have an ID, something happens, they can uh, identify who you are and who to charge for whatever damage you caused. And when these people do check your ID, there's way too much information you're providing. You provide your photo, your name, your address. This person can track you down. Releasing that information could pose a risk. You just need to know, yes, they're over the age of 21 and that they have an ID in case anything happens. No other information needs to be released. And with decentralized identity, I don't know how much potential money could be in the space. A lot of different platforms are onboarding it on top of their existing services like Neo, Dragon Chain, Mask Network, Unstoppable Domains. They're all working on this. Now I'm also working with a smaller one called Hypersign Identity. I don't want to pump the project, so don't buy the coin. I'm just saying what they're doing and that is decentralized identity and building community. So I'm actually doing a giveaway. If you happen to watch this video in time, I'll leave a link in the description. You would have to create a Hypersign decentralized identity and all you need is an email address and a password. And this proves you're a real person and makes it a lot easier to participate in giveaways. So with their community building, they do things like giveaways similar to Gleam, but made for blockchain. And with that, I hope you got your full value for today. We learned a lot about NFTs, what they could potentially be doing but we don't really know what's gonna happen over the next 10 years. There is a lot of use cases, there is a lot of potential, but we don't know yet. Uh, a lot of people are excited about it. A lot of certain projects could be very undervalued if this is a sector that is gonna grow over the next decade. This is just something you might wanna investigate and that you might wanna invest in. Now, don't invest in any of these specific projects. I was using these as examples to show you the different use case scenarios. There could be dozens of different projects that do the exact same thing and maybe better, maybe worse. Uh, not financial advice. I just want to help you, the viewer, if the, and let me know if this was helpful or if there is a specific project you want a deep dive on. And with that, I hope you got your full value for today. Oh, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you, that's great for all my YouTube analytics. I appreciate that. If you wanna join the Discord or follow me on social media, there are links in the description.